Hey folks, welcome back to DCS. Uh, today we're going to be looking at one of the missions from the Georgian War campaign, which is a paid for mission park for the F-15C. Our mission today is to deter a flight of around 10 Russian ground strike aircraft from attacking Georgian forces, either by actively shooting them down or just scaring them into turning around by merely being there and locking them up. But what ends up happening is that these sneaky Russians only sent the strike aircraft to scare us into scrambling our best assets. Luring us into position for a pencil manoeuvre between a pair of Fighter 2 ships, a flight of SC-27s from one direction and a flight of MiG-29s from another. The reason I'm showing you this in particular is because I've been working through this campaign to try and improve my situational awareness, and at the start I was struggling to even find things based on AWOC's picture calls, because they give you bearings from bulls rather than your own position. But now I've got that mostly down pat, I feel like I can actually handle myself a little better, and this is the first time I've managed to engage a contact in BVR, successfully pull evasive manoeuvres and recommit, survive past the merge and win the fight with BFM rather than BVR. This is a milestone for me, even if it is only AI. But on top of me wanting to make a video to mark a milestone, I also want to show you TagView, which allows you to replay fights and see all the analytical data to better understand what was going on, so that you can adjust better for next time. But we'll get into that in a little while, after we've run through the actual engagement. So we've skipped ahead, um, and we're head to head now with the first set of enemy bandits. You'll see on the RWR up ahead it's showing a MiG-29 spike. Um, flankers and MiG-29s all use the same radar, so even if it's an SU-27 it'll still show up as a MiG-29. And just now we've had a second pair of uh, fighters appear to our left, so this is the pencil maneuver that I was talking about. So I'm going to push the pair ahead of me. I just checked the fuel briefly there just to see if I could ditch my tanks yet. And I'm going to push this uh, pair ahead as fast a speed as I can just to get my missile kinematics to be more uh, effective. And I'm also climbing slightly. Um, so we're pushing within 30 miles right now. And we're almost hitting Mach 1.2. The enemies are now painting me on radar. We're now pushing away from the other pair as we push in towards these ones, so we're opening separation from the other set, and we're within launch range. Fox 3 times 2 so it's a 17 second impact, well 17 seconds on the, before the missiles go pitbull, so I have to try and maintain radar lock until the missiles go pitbull, it's now saying 7, 6 seconds they actually aren't even hot on me because they've gone defensive still got some fuel in the tanks we're not under any threat from these guys right now, they aren't now it's hot on me, they aren't going to fire on me, they're entirely defensive of my missiles. We fired from ridiculously high speed and much higher altitude, so they really stood absolutely no chance whatsoever. And there's the first splash, shortly followed by the second, and you'll see them drop off radar as the missiles connect. You'll notice that after we fired, we cranked right. Um, that was to further increase the separation between us and the second pair of bandits full burner and we're going to turn back in to the other set. Just looking on the radar right now to uh, wait for them to pop up. And there they are. 34 and 31,000 at feet altitude. So they are both very slightly higher than me, but they probably aren't going to be faster than I am. So locking them up in TWS, which means we can fire on both of them back to back, just like the last set. Pushing within 40 nautical miles now. As you can see on the range scale, you've got your uh, maximum launch range ideal, which is looking to be about 10. Which is surprisingly short, but that means the range at which they'll never possibly dodge it. So these MiGs are painting me with their radars, 
And if they are actually MiG 29s and they also have Fox 3s, which means they have a little bit more range. They've launched on me there, so I'm going to return fire in kind. Crank off to the right to increase the missile flight time, or their missile flight time to me. And uh, slow the uh, closure rate slightly. You can see them going defensive over there, diving to get away from my missile. And now that my missiles have gone pit ball, I'm just going to turn cold. There's no need for me to be heading towards them still when the missiles are working on their own steam. Don't need to maintain the radar lock, so it's better to just stay safe. I uh, told my wingman to cover me at the start of this engagement, thinking that he would automatically engage anything that locked me up. But what he's actually done is basically stay in formation with me which isn't tremendously helpful for the engagement, but it does mean that he remains on my RWR, which means that I can tell where he is, which is quite useful. It means that his calls, um, whenever he calls where a bandit is in relation to himself, it means that I can actually figure that out myself as well. So you've seen now that we killed one of the MiG-29s. Our wingman hasn't reported any kills on his end, so there's still one up somewhere. I honestly thought that both of mine had missed, it took that long for that one to reach him. It, I think the missile was in the air for about a minute, which is insane. So we've been launched on by the other one that's still alive. I'm turning away and diving just to get the speed up. The more lead the missile has to pull, the more energy it's going to burn. And we're popping chaff as well whilst we go, just to try and notch it. I'm trying to get the angle to be 90 degrees so that it'll just lose track but still learning so not particularly great in the tag V you'll notice that this missile was trashed insanely early on and I just pulled insanely wide to be sure um, that's something that your tag view is helpful to, to teach you about so that you don't make the same mistakes multiple times because here you'll see that there's a missile out on our, uh, our wingman and if I had realised that this missile is no threat to me whatsoever. I could have turned in so much earlier and splashed this MiG before he even had a chance to fire on our, uh, our wingman. So we're closing in pretty close. I know that the enemy's definitely within 10 miles, so I'm using the vertical scan on my radar, which is a lift vector lock. It looks basically straight ahead and upwards and anything on that line, it'll automatically lock. So at first we actually lock our wingman up, as you can see with that cross in the box, and there's a missile heading for him, as you can see from that trail. Um, so I flick around, hoping to vertical scan the other way, and I don't see the MiG until then. So I'm flicking the other way, um, I overroll a bit and nearly lose control of the aircraft. Unfortunately our wingman dies, but um, in the debrief I still got 100%, so whoever made this mission must think that your wingman is entirely dispensable. So. I'm not going to worry too much about that. He is only an AI after all. And then uh, vertical scan locks us up within two miles. So switch to sidewinders and annihilate his nipples off. Nice. So here's Tark View, head to head with the flankers. You can see our speed, Mach 1.24. Amram's lofting up there as we crank right. And the flankers immediately go defensive, meaning that they're no threat to me. And due to the kinematics, our altitude advantage and our speed advantage, these Amrams were hitting home at Mach 1.5-ish after being launched at 25 miles. So those flankers really had no chance whatsoever. Skipping ahead to the MiG-29s. So these guys fire on me first, um, which forces me to fire. They're co-alt with me, the same altitude, and they're roughly Mach 1, whereas I'm doing Mach 1.3. Their missiles bleed off speed ridiculously fast. Dropping under Mach 2 there for theirs. Mine is still doing almost Mach 3. So that missile that's coming at me is trashed. There's no way it's going to hurt me. I'm only doing Mach 
So if our first missile's come in on that lead MiG-29, and I've no idea how that missed. It was doing Mach 1.5, it was doing 0.66, it should have eaten him alive, he somehow jinked it at the last second, not sure. And then, this is the second one, we were way cold by this point, I never expected either of them to hit, but... There you go, got lucky I suppose. So this is where I was talking about the uh, wingman covering me being on my 6, but... I thought that he'd have been hot on this, uh, this MiG, because that's... You know, that's how you cover someone. So, this is where I got launched on this missile that we're looking at right now. Um, I'm doing Mach 1.4, nearly 1.5 in a dive. And this missile's not even hitting Mach 1, and there's no way it's ever, ever going to reach me. But because it's still pinging my RWR, I'm still worried about it. I could have turned in so long ago. That missile going out on our friendly is the one that we saw the launch of. So I stack high to try and get my nose around. Around now is when I switched to vertical scan and locked my teammate up, as you can see from this blue dash line. And this is where the MiG crossed our nose, just as he was firing that missile trail that we saw, which actually kills our wingman. And then we pull around on his six. Fire an aim nine up his ass, and that's all she wrote. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video folks, that's the end, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, cheers.